Hello. This is going to be a little bit of a follow-up video to my last video, just talking about health and uh, fitness. And so my main purpose and intent in this video is to help motivate at least one person that watches this video, because if I can motivate one person to get out there and make a change, then this was all worth it. If I can motivate two people, bonus. If I can motivate more than two people, uh, it's awesome. So um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, me and uh, my exercise and some of the reasons why. Um, and I'll get to that afterwards. But first, I'll show you some video footage of me in the gym yesterday. Okay, so this is me doing back exercises. So I wanted to do a little bit of back exercises and a little bit of biceps. And so this is uh, me starting on chin-ups. Uh, the video is a bit uh, odd. It gets better. Um, and so I generally like to start with chin-ups. So this is probably my fourth set of chin-ups. And I'm just focusing on the underhand grip. So chin-ups, something I love, but you'll see uh, my form is terrible. Right. Yep. So, I admit it. Um, Pull-ups, I think, are one of the best exercises. It's a nice compound exercise, so my purpose is uh, back and bicep. Just trying to go nice and slow, nice and controlled. And that's me failing. And so the next exercise I like to do is uh, bent over rows. So it's really helpful for me to have the personal trainer there just to help spot any uh, problems I have with form. Uh, this is 60 kilos. I'll put the pounds in the video for you so you can uh, translate it. So again, just picking it up, just being really careful. Um, you know, one of my main goals in the exercise is just to sort of be really careful not to hurt or injure myself because the, the purpose of what I'm doing here is strength training, uh, number one, but also flexibility, yeah, core strength nice. are some of my uh, main goals and also um, uh, increased stamina. So as you get older, uh, you tend to sort of uh, slacken off a little bit. So here's my um, bent over rows getting a little bit better. And uh, what have we got here? Uh, just some deadlifts. So I just wanted to just do some sort of practice deadlifts here. I did some earlier in the week and I was still a little bit sore. So I'm just sort of uh, taking it easy here. But these bigger compound movements um, are generally what I would recommend trying to move towards as a exercise a routine because they work so many different parts of the body and as long as you're careful and you've got good form then generally most of the time you're not going to hurt yourself um, for me I, I need to warm up a fair bit before I start just to try and again reduce injury so you don't want to do this and then injure yourself and then you can't do it for like a month or something like that And uh, here's some, uh, just some basic rows. So this here is, I think, 60 kilos. Again, just the same type of weight. So I don't want to go too crazy heavy. I just want to try and focus on form. Keep it nice and slow. Keep it controlled. You'll hear the trainer in the background a little bit, so I'll turn the volume down. So this is me with uh, a little bit better form. Doing the Good, uh, huge rows. improvement, huge. Chest up throughout the whole movement. Oh, that's it. Well I think I did one more set of 65 kilos after that. Here's just some simple bent over rows. You know, you don't have to do anything fancy. Uh, it's always good to change things up a little bit, but these are just uh, simple bent over rows. Uh, those um, dumbbells are 30 kilos. Again, just mainly trying to work on form. Um, here at this point in time, I do have a slight uh, injury in my right elbow. So I'm just being very cautious to uh, not hyperextend it or straighten it too much. Just trying to take it really easy. Okay, much better. 
Okay, so that was pretty much my exercise routine that I did yesterday. After that, I did a little bit of biceps, but the, the main goal of what I was doing in those exercises was actually bicep work. So I'm using those larger compound movements to, to exercise my biceps. I kind of avoid um, trying to make my arms big. I'm just trying to work on those type of movements. And also, when I do my back, I always like to do a little bit of forearm uh, exercises as well. So the the reason why I'm doing all of this is a, I guess, because I want to, and uh, b, because I need to. So not so long ago, I guess I was in a bad routine of being a little bit lazy with exercise, um, and the food that I was eating wasn't that good. So I guess I put on a little bit of fat, and so the goal here for me is to drop fat and to get stronger. The the strength that I really want is core strength because. Um, what happened was my body was out of whack. And I think what happened is all of the muscles around my lower back just went and um, I felt uh, an extreme amount of pain and lack of movement. And what I found is that when you go to medical professionals, they tend to stay in their own area of expertise and don't really branch out and give you much information that can help. So the, the one thing that has helped me the most is understanding that the muscles that are in balance will pull and cause tightness in other muscles in the body. So it's important to have like a total body sort of wellness program to achieve a desired outcome. So my desired outcome was uh, strength in my lower back and my core so that I wouldn't have any back problems is my main thing. And uh, doing the heavy weight training, doing the, um, I do lots of sort of flexibility and stretching. Um, I do yoga classes. So at the gym that I'm going to, uh, my main focus at the moment is doing um, aerobic type exercise classes. That's called, a, it's like an EMF, it's called Elite Military Fitness. It's actually a bloody awesome gym. Um, I should take you for a walk through through it. It's it's uh, awesome, and they have classes where basically you'll do like an exercise for thirty seconds, you'll rest for ten seconds, you do an exercise for thirty seconds, you rest for ten seconds, and they got other classes, all sorts of classes, but these ones are quite popular. So I've been doing the high intensity training classes. I've been doing boxing classes, doing uh, six pack classes where they focus on your lower. Uh, your midsection, been doing aerobic classes for stretching, and in between I've been doing some weight training. Um, so I've just sort of scaled back the weight training over the last couple of weeks just to try and allow my elbow to uh, recover. And yeah, so my whole goal was to try and gain flexibility, gain strength, gain confidence to be able to do all of these things. And uh, just going to the gym and understanding what your body needs. And as you get older, you kind of realize where some of the problems are. And sometimes you need help. Help might be a physiotherapist, uh, an experienced massage therapist, chiropractors. You kind of have to try and gain bits of each professional and take on board what it is that you need. Um, Personal trainers, you know, all of this costs money. But You can find this information out yourself. Like when I hurt my lower back, you know, you go to a chiropractor, they crack your back, but they don't really tell you anything to make it better. You're all a lot of the ones that I've seen anyway. And so it's the the imbalances in the body and trying to sort of correct it. And um, the lack of strength in your body parts is probably a big issue that could be causing problems for you. Um, So that's a little bit about the exercising training that I'm doing at the moment. The other important thing is diet. Diet is probably the most important thing. So for me, I've sort of moved towards uh, what's called uh, fasting. And so I'm doing intermittent fasting. And so generally what I'm doing is that I don't eat for 16 hours of a day and then I eat for eight hours. And then I don't eat for 16 hours and then I eat for eight hours. 
So for me to transition to that, um, I kind of looked at a, a keto diet, which was a high fat diet. And so one of the first things that I did was basically drop carbs from my diet and try and increase the amount of fat that you eat, which is basically like the keto diet. And so what you're doing is you're training your body to use fat for energy. So instead of sugars and carbs that I believe get turned to sugars for energy, you basically don't put that into your body anymore. You put fat into your body, protein, plus, you know, fruit and vegetables. And so your body then basically just wants to use fat for energy. And so when, you know, it runs out of sugars in the blood, I'm no professional, I'm just rambling, um, it's, it's easier for the body to switch over and use fat for energy. And <clears throat> I think, you know, transitioning to that type of a style of diet where you stop eating carbs and you force your body to use fat for energy um, is a little rough. Um, but once you get over that hump of uh, being a bit rough, you find that you have lots of energy. And so for me personally, um, you know, I don't eat for 16 hours of the day and there's not one part of the day that I generally feel hungry or it causes me a problem. If anything, I feel a greater amount of mental clarity. And you have to go back to, like, uh, you have to go back to sort of like the hunter-gatherer not even the hunter-gatherer, you just go back a hundred years ago, all right? People didn't eat five or six meals a day. You know, if you got one or two meals a day, that would be pretty good, I think. And so I think that even like a hundred years ago, people probably only ate one, possibly two meals a day. And I, I think that, you know, that's kind of a normal thing. You know, animals generally will go through a fasting period and then they'll feast and then they'll fast. And I believe people have been doing that type of thing ever since we've been people because, you know, we don't have supermarkets where you can just lazily walk down the aisle and pick up food. Or in the past, you had to go find it, chase it, catch it, and cook it. So I think that it's a, it's a very natural state for the body to be in in a semi-fasting state every day because I don't believe there's any part of our history where there's been so many sugars and processed foods so freely available to just simply stuff in your mouth that has mostly salt or sugar or fat for taste. Um... So that's basically me. So I've moved to intermittent fasting. You've got to make that switch on, on stopping the sugars and the carbs being in your body. And uh, you have to stop that. Once you go into that fasting period of eating for eight hours, then it kind of opens you up to be a bit more flexible with your food. But I would still avoid eating carbs in most meals. Um, try and look for foods that are not processed look for foods that are natural that they are in the most natural state possible that you can get fruit and vegetables they're growing meat um, is meat generally i don't recommend eating too much meat um, because you know uh, i i just don't think that that's probably the best thing but you know, everybody's in their own situation. I'm currently eating a little bit. I'm not eating a lot, but I am eating it. Um, you know, fruit and vegetables, nuts. Um, I love nuts. Um, eggs. Eggs are, you know, one of my sources of proteins. And that's it. Try and find food as natural as possible. Because, you know, you look at the labels these days and the the amount of ingredients that are in them are just... It's just... It, mind-boggling that companies go to such an extent to make the food so psychologically desirable to our taste buds and our mind that it creates a kind of addiction to these foods 
And that there is probably the key to this whole discussion is is breaking the addiction to those foods, finding a diet schedule that works for you, focus on eating uh, healthy and foods that are as natural in their natural state as possible, and exercising. And, you know, you don't need anything special to do all this. You just need the switch in your brain to flick over and just start. And once you start doing it, and you start doing a little bit of exercise, and you start seeing results in yourself, then that that greater layer of motivation gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, just not falling into that trap of going back into old routines, I think is important. So I didn't expect this talk to go for so long, but exercise, get stronger, find what's the problem with you look at imbalances in your body um, look at your diet um, try and step away from the whole ingrained idea that you need breakfast what you probably need is break fast so that your breakfast is your break fast so for example for me i'll try st- stop eating between four and six o'clock at night or afternoon night And then I'll try and go till about 10 or 11 the next day to eat food. And that is when I break my fast to eat food. Um, But again, you know, you don't want to eat cereal. Look at the ingredients that are in there. I'm I'm guessing most colourful cereals on the market are probably, what, 20% sugar? I don't know. Um, And I generally try and avoid... Uh, dairy and milk so I ate some cheese but I um, don't drink milk at all Um, so this is just what I'm doing Uh, it works for me so you need to find what works for you but I think you'll find that this style of thinking can work for a lot of people because that whole intermittent fasting has been fasting has been around for a long time and there are numerous scientific studies that show that there is benefit in fasting. So um, it's just a matter of doing it. Because you've been eating sugar and carbs for so long, you kind of, well, you will have a hard time trying to process yourself to not eating it. For me, it was easier because I'm very comfortable eating a higher fat food. Um, and I've avoided eating carbs before, so it's kind of like a natural progression for me. But, you know, trying it out yourself, it's going to be a bit rough. It's not going to be a simple flick and switch. You will find, um, they call it, like with the keto diet, they call it the keto flu. And um, I definitely felt really bad for a couple of days, not sick, but just not right. And then afterwards, everything went rosy it was all sunshine and flowers after that you know it's real easy um and so now I'll, yeah go 16 hours without a problem and i'll be doing my gym exercises at the end of my fast so i'm not telling you to do that i'm just telling you that i do my exercises at the end of my fast at the end of a 16 hour window of not eating and i i don't have energy problems i don't have my body running out of sugar because there is no sugar in it um i don't feel my body eating itself the catabolic state um that's something that is something that you can happen i i hardly ever feel that catabolic state where um you know i feel really hungry and i need to get something into my stomach to fix a problem So I don't feel a catabolic state because your body knows that it's going to get food later on. So it's it's not that worried. And apparently, I was listening on YouTube to some very intelligent person that's more intelligent than me, that human growth hormone production increases by like a thousand percent when you're in a fasting state. And um, I'll put on a fair chunk of muscle and... I haven't eaten, I've maybe had three protein shakes and I have not tried to make 
myself have a big protein intake, which I probably should, but I haven't. Um, I just kind of eat sort of normal meals, but I do try and eat, I try and get some protein into my system. But, you know, I'm eating like two meals a day. How easy is that to eat two meals a day? You don't have to go preparing lots of meals, you just eat two large meals a day. I don't know why other people aren't doing it. Um, but uh, sorry to ramble on for like an hour. Um, but there is some health benefits to the whole fasting and there's health benefits to um, giving your body more core strength, uh, flexibility and, um, and strength. So, you know, by lifting the heavy weights, you gain a little bit more strength, more muscle, and that increases your metabolism, burns more energy, burns more fat. It's a, an effect that sort of, you know, adds on to each other. I'm going to sign off, and uh, I still got a little bit more information to go on the whole imbalance thing. Like, um, for me, I just went and got a massage, and uh, there's a massage therapist, which is really good, and I've been having like problem with my neck and he's seeing tightness in my tricep and you know there's muscles that run all the way up here and because you've got a problem here or here it creates another problem here and so you can't fix this problem until you fix this problem but how do you find out about that problem it's the whole mystery um but yeah, lots of muscles sort of balance each other out.